In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make hexagonal graph paper. I'm using Affinity Publisher 2, but it works in Publisher 1 and any publishing software where you can draw shapes. They are really easy to make and come in very handy. Stick around because at the end of the video, I give you a list of six uses for hexagonal paper and tell you how you can target certain audiences to niche down what seems like a generic design into something targeting specific customers. And if that sounds like the sort of thing you like, please do like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I make videos like this very regularly, and I share with you all of my ideas for new low content books. On with the video. Here we are in Affinity Publisher 2, and this technique works just as well in Affinity Publisher 1. The first thing to do is to choose the size of your document. Now I've got a few of these set up in presets, so I just click on the one I want, which will be 8.5 by 11, and then click Create. If you've got Affinity Publisher 2, I advise you to use these as presets. It saves so much time. You don't have to mess about changing the bleed or the margins every time you want to create a document. It's just already there. And this is the document. I'm going to work in master pages because I'm going to duplicate this design all throughout the book. And I will also you know, I'll have one graph paper page on this master A page, and then I'll just duplicate that through the entire book. I am going to change the master page to just single pages because it's going to be the same design on both pages. It just saves time. The first thing I want to show you is the polygon tool that's how we're going to make the hexagon so if we go to the shape tool on the sidebar there go down to polygon and then we'll change the number of sides to six that's your basic shape now i'll just remove the fill and give it a stroke so we can see it So this is the basic shape. The problem, as you can see, is that there is a bit of a gap between the side of the shape and the boundary box edge. Now it's not a massive problem, and you can use the technique I'm going to show you to, to make the graph paper using this hexagon without making any changes to it. The problem is that you can't say really that it's a half inch hexagonal graph paper because that bit might be half inch, top to bottom, but side to side isn't. To make it all equal, we're going to have to pull out another shape. The rectangle tool. And we'll use this rectangle to get this hexagon in the right proportions. And it's at this point that you want to decide how large your graph paper is going to be because this is the time we set the size. So I'm going to make mine half an inch. So I'll change the squared uh, dimensions to half a half an inch in height and width. And then we've just got to fit this hexagon inside this square. Just zoom in. So now I want to take the top point of the hexagon and make sure it's touching the top point of the box. Now it's got a snap on so that works well for the top and bottom. The sides won't snap because we're not technically using the side of the shape box, we're just using the side of this shape. So you've got to do it by eye, but take your time and get it right. You know that'll do for me. So now we have a hexagon that we can see is definitely half an inch high and half an inch wide. And I want to delete the box because I don't need that anymore. So this is the hexagon that we're going to be repeating across the entire page. The first step is to select it and then to drag it into the top left corner. If you page so that only the bottom right 
quarter of it is shown. That way, when it prints, you're going to ensure that all of the shape is over the blade. With that in position, and the hexagon still selected, I'm going to duplicate it and just drag it to the right. Shift Control and then click drag. That's right. So now we're going to duplicate the hexagon along the top of the page. And instead of having to just copy and drag it like we did that time, we can now use the duplicate command. So you'll notice that I haven't deselected anything from the initial shift control drag. And now if I hold down control and then just tap G a few times, you'll see the top row become filled with hexagons. Now just select them all and control G to group. Now we're going to copy this group down and to the right slightly so it fits in with these nooks and crannies. So with the group selected, hold down control, drag the shape down and to the left. Position it roughly and then zoom in and do the rest by eye. That looks right there. And now select them all, group them again just for ease's sake. And then we're going to do this maneuver one more time. Shift Control and then just drag it straight down. Again, zoom in and neaten it up by eye again. That's fine. And now without deselecting anything, we can do the old Control G trick again. And that's it. That is your graph paper made. Easy as that. I'm just going to pages and we will add, say, 100 pages, master A. And that's your book. Now, if you wanted to, you could change the hexagon size to whatever you want when you started. A quarter of an inch half an inch, three quarters of an inch, they're the popular sizes. If you wanted to, you could combine the graph paper, the hexagon graph paper with normal graph paper pages and, you know, have a, a mixed book. So that's how you make the book, but what sort of customers can you target with hexagonal paper? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are a few uses for hexagonal paper and you should target each one individually as well as having a generic hexagonal graph paper pad. So here's an example of the just generic book. Hexagonal graph paper, quarter of an inch, eight and a half by 11. Here is a one that is more targeted towards the chemistry end of the uses for hexagonal paper. So organic chemistry in particular, where you've got to draw these chains, it would come in handy for that. So instead of just having a generic paper have one that is targeted for students of organic chemistry people who play role-playing games use hexagonal paper to map out things so you can target gamers as well and as you can see it's just basic hexagonal tiles you could design yours a bit better than this rather than just having hexagonal tiles you could have a board around with game appropriate art. You could have lined areas for people to write about the encounter. There, so like have a have a double page spread so the left is hexagonal, the right page is half hexagonal, continuing on, and then a lined section for notes. This is the one I found on eBay. It's just a hex mapping journal. Which again is probably linked to role playing games, but you know People do use hexagonal paper to map things out a little bit more accurately than just having squares to work with. Now, something I saw when I did my research was using it for art, for geometric art. This one's kind of targeting a bit of everything, but if you separated these into individual books, and make the cover nice and appropriate and the interior 
if you want to put images on the interior or on the title page, page one, before you get to the actual business end of the book, you could make this one book into four or five and target specific specific audiences that way. And just to look inside of this, it's just exactly the same, apart from it doesn't go at the edge. So there's a blank border there. Fill out the niche, which could be used to drive the niche home by adding patterns or you know something around the outside, but it's just left blank. And here's a final example, hexagonal paper targeted at the maths group, maths and science. So straight away you've got just a generic pad, maths book, organic chemistry book, a general science book, an RPG, planning book, the geometric art book. So that's what, six, six potential niches. And then again with each one of those you can drill down, so don't just have a hexagonal book for organic chemistry, have one for students, have one for university students, have one for high school students, have one for teachers who want to plan things out. So with this one pad of paper you can make 20 books. So hopefully that's given you a few ideas on how to use this hexagonal paper. It's very easy to make. You probably could download a printable from somewhere, but it's always best to make your own especially if and there has been issues around this recently people just taking things from the internet and selling them themselves if you make it yourself you know that you own the rights to it you also know how to make it different sizes and also just learning how to do something yourself is fun so that is it for today's video thanks for watching and i shall see you next time mm -hmm.